Welcome to a brief introduction to Build Out, a talk I gave at the Pi Atlanta meeting in January 2008. I'm Brandon Craig Rhodes. There's three easy steps to using Build Out. Get a buildout.cfg or download a package that already uses one. Second, run bootstrap.py. And third, run the Build Out command that the bootstrap provides. In order to get a handle on what all that means, we're going to first build out an empty project. That'll let you see what Build Out does to Bootstrap itself, absent the complexities that are introduced when you add recipes. Then we'll try building out a real example module as though we were going to develop on it, and then try adding and removing a dependency, and then adding a develop dependency, where we try developing it against the version of a public package from Subversion rather than from an egg and then we will conclude with great fanfare. Let's get started. Now I've put our first build-out example in the tar archive, but you can imagine that I'm doing whatever you do in your own work to get a fresh copy of a package to develop, maybe grabbing it from a website or checking it out of version control. Now we enter this directory and we'll take a look at its buildout.cfg. It has only a single section named build-out inside of which it lists no additional parts that it wants executed. This is the smallest possible buildout.cfg, which will let us examine the bootstrap process absent any additional complications. Second, now that we've got a buildout.cfg, we need to bootstrap our environment. Now, some buildout users actually install the buildout command system-wide, but I don't like cluttering up my system Python with things I'll have to keep upgraded. So I'm going to use a magic file here named bootstrap.py that was invented by the buildout folks. It downloads and sets up buildout for you in the current directory. It works like this. I choose one of the Python interpreters on my system, you can see there are several, and use it to run bootstrap.py. Pay close attention to which Python version you use when you run bootstrap.py, because the Python version you use will be the same version that's going to be used by all the other scripts that buildout creates in this directory. It takes a few seconds to run. There. Let's look around and see what it's done. We see first that several new directories have appeared. Two of them are empty, and we'll ignore them for this presentation. But the other two are very interesting. In the eggs directory, we'll find that Bootstrap has downloaded all of the packages that the buildout command needs for it to be able to run. And in the bin directory itself, we'll find a single command, buildout, ready for us to execute it. So. Having checked out our package and run bootstrap.py, we're ready to run buildout. Of course, since our buildout.cfg is pretty much empty, you'll remember, buildout itself won't do anything. There, it did nothing. We've now completed our simple example of a minimal buildout that does nothing but did bootstrap successfully. But a question should be lingering in your mind. How did bin buildout use the setup tools and ZC buildout modules that are sitting in the X directory when they're not in Python standard path? It's like magic. To get our answer, we can look inside of bin buildout. Look at what it does before trying to import buildout. It prepins to Python's path list the downloaded eggs that buildout needs if it's going to run. We're going to see more about this in a few minutes. For now, let's move on to using Buildout to help us create a development environment for an actual Python project. Now let's think for a second and ask, what do you need when you check out a module to do development on it? I think that without being greedy, you could reasonably ask for four things. First, for all of the dependencies of our module to get automatically installed. Second, for a Python interpreter, where we can try out our module interactively. Third, for the ability to call all the command line scripts that our module will provide to users. And fourth, for a way to call our module's test suite. We're about to look at a Python package whose buildout.cfg lets us automatically accomplish all four of these goals. Our example is a little module called Lunar. When I check out the source code, it looks kind of like this. To start with, we see that it includes a setup.py and a bunch of Python source files which isn't anything special or specific to build out. Any Python code that you're getting ready to deploy should look like this already, which is an important point. Build out doesn't make you do extra work. It just encourages you to follow what are already solid Python conventions. Then there are these two additional files that we've already looked at that are necessary for build out to work. Let's quickly look at each of these files. First, we'll look at setup.py. 
Setup.py files are really easy to write. You usually just cut and paste most of it from the last project you did. Two important things to point out here are the install requires line, which declares that the lunar module, in order to operate, needs the PyEFIM astronomy library installed. The other thing is that it declares an entry point. It declares a script that users should be able to run from the console called phase, and that behind their backs, when they run it, it should import the lunar module and run the function it finds there called phase command. Next, we'll look at the source code of lunar itself. Uh, all of its source code fits inside of its init.py. It imports the astronomy library, has a function that returns the moon's phase as an integer, and then a function that will print it out in case the user wants to use it interactively. It then has a test suite that we won't spend any time looking at, but does a basic sanity check to see if lunar.phase is returning a reasonable value. So remember, all of those files are just normal Python. We're now going to look at the only thing we've written specifically to get this working with buildout, the buildout.cfg. This one has three additional parts that it wants us to execute, three recipes that we've written telling buildout what to do. The first one, called Python, is going to create an interpreter that can import the lunar egg. The second is going to create all of the scripts defined inside of the lunar egg. And then finally, there's going to be a test harness that lets us run all of the test suites defined, you guessed it, inside of our lunar egg. Now that you've had a brief tour of this package, we're ready to run Bootstrap and run Buildout to see what all of those recipes are going to accomplish. First, you're going to see Buildout grab the three eggs that define the recipes that we used. Then it's going to turn its attention to our module and it's going to go grab the PyEFIM astronomy library that it requires to run. You can see that the eggs directory now contains both the recipe code and the astronomy library that our module needs to run. The bin directory has gained three new scripts, one for each recipe we've written that provide the fundamental development tools that we were wishing for earlier. A Python interpreter that can import and run our module, the phase command line tool that we defined in our setup.py, and finally, a harness for running our test suite. So let's step back for a moment and review what we've just created. We've made a self-contained development environment that can be recreated anywhere with a single pair of commands. There's no more need for an install.txt file listing modules that developers need to go fetch. They just run bootstrap, run buildout, and they'll be developing in a directory that looks just like yours. Now, buildout also makes possible rapid trials of new dependencies. The key to understanding this is that your setup.py is reread, and the bin directory scripts are completely rebuilt every time you rerun buildout. So, you can go through the following quick cycle to test new dependencies. Add the dependency to setup.py, rerun buildout, and then try it out with your application by importing it and using it. If you don't like it, just remove the dependency and rerun buildout. Let me show you an example of this cycle in action. Let's try using the popular SQL Alchemy package with our lunar module. We'll edit the source code, add an import of SQL Alchemy up here, and uh, then maybe a print statement so we can see that it was really loaded. All right, that looks pretty good. And of course, if we now run our bin phase command, it dies because we haven't put SQL Alchemy on our system. What are we going to do? Well, to make SQL Alchemy appear, all we've got to do is to list it as a dependency in our setup.py and then rerun buildout. It's going, fetching the new SQL Alchemy package, and if we rerun our phase command, we'll see that SQL Alchemy is now available for our module. What if we try out SQL Alchemy, decide its features aren't for us, it's not going to help our program, and we want to get rid of it? Well, we just go back into setup.py and remove it as a dependency. You can always edit your setup.py and rerun buildout, and you'll find that it's now disappeared from the list of dependencies. This is extremely crucial and extremely wonderful. Pay very close attention to what just happened. Buildout hasn't deleted the package it downloaded. It's still there in the eggs directory in case we need it again in a few minutes. But since it's not in our setup.py, 
it's no longer available from any of the scripts that our buildouts created. This means that buildout forces you to keep setup.py in sync with the packages your module actually imports. If you leave something out of setup.py like we did here, your module won't work. This means that you get to discover right during development that you've omitted a dependency from setup.py instead of having a customer call later after you've released the package asking why it's throwing an exception. Because if you installed the dependencies the old way, by easy installing them on your whole system, you'd have nothing to remind you to add their names to setup.py so that customers will get the dependency installed too. Thanks to a single buildout.cfg file we've added to this package, you don't have to download other packages yourself, you won't forget to add them to setup.py, and it takes only a few seconds to try out a new package that you think might help you write an application. If your current methodology makes it take more than a few seconds to try out a new Python package, then you're letting too big an obstacle stand in the way of rapid experimentation and prototyping. Now, what if we want to develop against an egg that hasn't even been built yet? because it's still being written. It's still just a setup.py file and some code. The solution is to check out the project source code without building it into an egg at all, and then mention the directory you've put it in in the develop line of your buildout.cfg. Just point right at the directory that has the project source code and its setup.py. We put it right up here on this line that says develop equals. You probably didn't realize this, but the reason there was a dot there is that that's how it discovered the lunar module in the first place. We said look at dot, look at the current directory, and it found its setup.py. So if we add SQL alchemy here, then when we rerun build out, it's going to discover SQL alchemy sitting right there. And of course it's going to ignore it because I forgot to add it back to our dependencies in setup.py. Once again, notice how wonderful buildout is. It's even keeping me honest. We rerun buildout. It now knows it's got to grab SQL Alchemy, but it notes that it doesn't have to grab the egg because it's found it right there in one of our develop eggs. If we run the phase command again, we now see that SQL Alchemy is available. We're not throwing an exception anymore, but it's now that version from Subversion that's sitting in the current directory. Buildout is ignoring the egg in the X file because we said, no, 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 we need to test our program for right now against the SQL alchemy we've just checked out from Subversion. Well, that concludes my demonstrations. Buildout gives you isolation. Each directory with a buildout in it can use different versions of packages even different versions of Python without them affecting each other. It gives you repeatability. You and your friend developers can have the same packages available whatever system you're on. If you really want it to be repeatable, by the way, make sure you put some version numbers in the dependencies in your setup.py. Finally, it's fun. Your job as a Python developer will be easier and you'll be more inclined to quickly try out dependencies that might make your development more agile. Now, I should quickly note that Buildout is also good for deployment because an application that you install inside of a buildout is protected because it has its own copy of every egg it needs. Recipes already exist for creating configuration files and setting up databases, and you can learn to write your own, but I won't show you any examples. Go try running either Zope Project or Grot Project to see a good example. They each create a buildout powered application sitting in its own directory without touching anything on your system Python at all. Visit roadsmill.org slash brandon slash buildout for all of my hints and tips about using buildout and for the source code to the buildout examples used in this presentation. Good luck.